Welcome to the Squared Circle Pit! With your host, Rob Paspani! What is up? Thank you for entering the Squared Circle Pit. It's Rob. I'm flying solo this week for a very special episode. I want to discuss what I am ranking as the top 20 heavy metal entrance themes in pro wrestling history. I'm going all across the spectrum of promotions, all across the world, and all across history to pick out the 20 most metal songs. Now, uh, believe it or not, it was a little challenging to uh, make this list, and there were a few songs that didn't end up making the cut. Uh, most sadly for me, the number 21, I would say, would be the entrance theme for The Brood because they were so friggin' goth. <laughs> and just the whole vibe is super metal with the blood. And I mean, they would basically, I feel like the if The Brood were a band, they would open for Demo Borgir or something like that, right? With Gangrel, Edge, and Christian at the time. So that was 21. But let's start the official list. And of course, I want to know what you think. Did I leave anything out? Did I rank something too high or too low? Hit me up on social media at Rob Paspani, at Squared Circle Pit on Twitter, no E in circle. And uh, let me know. Let me know what your picks are. Let me know how your rankings compare to mine. I'll post an image macro on, on the socials with what my rankings are, and we could debate the whole thing there. And so uh, here we go. Number 20. Starting off hot, uh, something relatively recent. The late, great Bray Wyatt with his uh, amazingly metal character, The Fiend, and his theme created by Code Orange exclusively for Bray called Let Me In. And I still remember the first time The Fiend debuted. He had that amazing mask on made by horror legend Dan Savino. And... Uh, and I was just so blown away by the entire presentation and the, the most of which was how awesome the song sounded. It sounded like a mosh anthem. And of course, Code Orange tweeted right away like, hey, this is our doing. We teamed up with WWE. We talked with Bray. We, we conceptualized the song. And it came out amazing. And I always, always looked forward to that entrance. I love the slow buildup. And in general, it's just a, a great, great song. So uh, that's my number 20, Bray Wyatt. I mean, and I know what you might be thinking, if Bray Wyatt's a 20, how metal is the rest of the list going to be? And the answer is very metal. <laughs> uh, the next entry on the list is from New Japan Pro Wrestling. I felt like New Japan needed to be represented on this list because they're a very metal promotion. There was that moment a few years ago at Wrestle Kingdom where Megadeth guitarist Marty Friedman played Hiroshi Tanahashi to the stage. And Tanahashi himself is kind of a a rock god. Like, that's sort of his gimmick. He plays the air guitar and everything. But no, I do not have Tanahashi in the list. In general, I feel like they have a lot of power metal-esque songs. There's a lot of great ones like Shibata comes to mind and uh, Minoru Suzuki with Kazari Nari. But I feel like that... It's not quite metal. It's rock, very much so. It's one of my favorite entrance themes of all time. But the most metal theme, I think, for me, is Jushin Thunder Liger's theme. Because uh, that just sounds like a mix of heavy metal and uh, and anime, I would say. <laughs> and Jushin Thunder Liger, in general, just the name itself, sounds so metal. And I think that his whole presentation super metal and and right from the song he comes out with a beautiful cape like jushin thunder liger could be if, if there wasn't eddie he could be the mascot for iron maiden if need be right so uh definitely jushin liger belongs on the list number 18 we have finn balor the demon king uh of course now finn balor is in judgment day he's going for a more goth vibe which no complaints here for Finn's goth moment, but I was very much into his black metal moment and his death metal moment uh, when he initially debuted as the Demon King and he had that incredible symphonic Demu Borgir esque song. This is another name drop of Demu Borgir uh, for Demon King. 
And he, especially when he came out with the full demon makeup, like the, it looked like Venom almost from Spider-Man. And uh, just the whole presentation was incredible. So I would say Finn Balor with Demon King is uh, one of the most metal themes of all time. 17, here's a bit of a deep cut. Uh, this is going back to ECW, the first appearance by ECW on here. And really, honestly, the whole list could have just been ECW stuff because ECW was so metal. I mean, they're, the entrance, uh, the intro, rather, to ECW TV was White Zombie uh, with a little bit of Nine Inch Nails closer at the top before they got their own theme. And, and almost every act in ECW had a pretty sick rock or, in some cases, hip-hop entrance theme. One of my favorites was for the human suplex machine, Taz. He would come out to War Machine by Kiss. And uh, before I heard this song, I always thought Kiss was kind of a glam metal band. Like, you know, that I, I, when I think Kiss, I think rock and roll all night and party every day. You know, I think shout it out loud. Uh, I think these like poppy kind of hard rock songs. But then I remember hearing Taz come out and this super killer that riff is heavy as all hell and i was very surprised to learn that it was performed by kiss i didn't know kiss had this in them until learning of course that once they took the makeup off they were kind of trying anything to get credibility back with some of their uh larger fan base and so they did a album that can be described almost as like Judas Priest and Pantera worship where they do heavier songs and War Machine is the highlight sang by Gene Simmons and it's truly one of my favorite Kiss songs. I've I've since gotten more into Kiss. They're not one of my favorite bands but I, I have a lot of respect for what they do and War Machine is certainly the best Pantera song Pantera never wrote. <laughs> uh, and I, I always got hyped up when Taz came out to this and I still, I remember downloading the track very, very early days of AOL and just listening to it like crazy. And now we are at number 16. And number 16 is Brian Danielson with uh, one of his entrance themes, uh, the one that he would use in Ring of Honor all the time when they didn't care about licensing, and one that we were even uh, so graced to have played for us uh, a few times here in AEW. I'm, of course, talking about The Final Countdown, one of the most metal songs of all time, easily. Like, let's let's not kid ourselves. And, of course, the song is by Europe. And uh, just the intro. I mean, I remember going to old Ring of Honor shows at the Hammerstein Ballroom, and it would be a four- or five-hour marathon show, and I'd be so tired. And then Brian Danielson is out there for the main event, and you just hear that do 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 and I'm just like that just wakes me up that was like drinking two shots of espresso and I was ready for the main event uh, I was very very surprised I was at Forbidden Door in Toronto earlier this year for the incredible Brian Danielson versus Okada match and Okada comes out he comes out to his Rainmaker theme which is a pretty killer theme in and of itself and then I look to the stage and I see the motion graphics starting for Brian Danielson. And it's not the same American Dragon motion graphics that, you know, th that he had before. But instead, it's this new motion graphics package. And I kind of had a feeling I was like, is he coming out to Final Countdown? And he was coming out to Final Countdown. I highly recommend looking this up on Twitter. AW has posted it. It was electric. It was so cool. It was such a great surprise to hear Brian Danielson come out to the final countdown. And uh, I I was just losing my shit. I was there with Jordan, who, of course, I co-hosted Kanitro with. And we were losing it. We were singing every word. We were so hyped up. And again, it really reminded me of those old Ring of Honor shows because Forbidden Door was a bit of a marathon. It was like a five-hour show. And I was very tired. The seats were very uncomfortable. I, I'm not a fan of that venue in Toronto, the Scotiabank Arena. But just singing the final countdown got me so hyped. Got me so hyped until then I had to sit back down. And the, when the adrenaline wore off five minutes in the match, I was like, oh, boy. 
I'm tired, but I really want to see this match. <laughs> and uh, so that was great. And it, I cannot tell you the uh, feeling of hearing the final countdown in a hockey arena, in a giant arena with that speaker system. It's it's magic. So absolutely check out the, the footage. I would, of course, include it here, but the bastards at YouTube would probably take down the video. So I want to be conscious of copyright law here. So it's just me talking, but all of this, I'll, but maybe I'll create a playlist for you guys. Uh, and, and then we could do it that way. So at number 15, we're, we're coming into the final 15 here. And I, uh, this was, uh, it was, it was tough for me to decide which, which one of the entrances for edge to pick, but I'm, I'm going with his current entrance theme, which is by Alter Bridge. It's, of course, a metalingus. It has metal in the name. Easy pick. But Edge has a history of awesome entrance themes. Of course, he came out for a really long time to Never Gonna Stop by Rob Zombie. And that was really, really fun. Uh, and Edge himself, huge metalhead. At WrestleMania this year, was ha- South of Heaven playing as he does his entrance. How cool was that? And Edge is no slack when it comes to heavy metal. He's no tourist. He's a legit metalhead. I've interviewed him on Squared Circle Pit. Uh, You could look up the audio of that on YouTube. And he talks about all the bands he listens to. And, you know, he's name dropping Behemoth, Amon Amarth. He listens to Liquid Metal on Sirius XM and uh, and Ozzy's Boneyard. He is a tried and true heavy metal fan. And I even remember uh, when Edge was coming up in WWE, there was a big feature in WWE Magazine at the time of how he... And Matt Hardy and Lita, before their old drama, went to a Pearl Jam show. And then they met the band backstage and how cool it was to see Pearl Jam. And at the time, I was just, it, I was so amazed that there was anybody in in WWE that liked the music that I like. I don't know. It seemed like a, a, a much weirder thing at the time. Number 14. Uh, th- this almost feels like it should be ranked higher. I- I'm a little uh, disappointed in myself, but <laughs> I'm going to go with the house of black, their entrance metal as fuck. Now talk about a black metal entrance. These guys look tough. They're wearing the corpse paint. They got the lights out, the monochrome when they were the trios champions doing the house of black rules matches with the, the, the brooding lighting. I love house of black. I love all of their entrances. There's Malachi's entrance. There's the uh, Knights of the Back Black Throne, him and Brody. And then, of course, the entire House of Black. And even Julia Hart. All of them have great, great gothy entrances. And it completely sets the mood. You know exactly who these characters are from the moment they step on the stage and the lights go out. And then they come up and you see them with those cool you know, uh, masks of goat skulls and whatever they, they're wearing. Uh, House of Black are metal. Uh, you know, I, I might have to might have to rank them up a little higher the, the further we get through this. Uh, I'll let you know. Number 13, lucky number 13, we got Chris Jericho. And Jericho's had plenty of metal themes. Of course, in WWE, he had Break the Walls Down, which was very metal. But you got to give the man props. He is the first guy that I can think of who came out to an entrance theme performed by his own band uh, with, of course, Fozzy. I've had uh, both Jericho and Rich Ward on the show. Rich Ward just a few weeks ago is a great interview. You should check it out. Uh, but it is a, it, you know, it's Fozzy's biggest hit, very much a metal track, very catchy. And I love the singing along. I love the the crowd participation and just going to AEW shows the last few years it's as as sick of it as it, I, I might be watching it on TV. When you're there live and the track kicks off, you've got maybe a drink or two in you. Just can't help but uh, singing along and just going, you are beautiful on the inside. <laughs> you're like, all of that. You know, I'm all about it. I'm all in. And in fact, I think there, there was a uh, AEW event. I'm trying to think where it was. I think it might have been in Jersey where I was I was a little sauced. Oh, no, you know what it was? It was Grand Slam, the very first Grand Slam. I was a little sauced. Jericho comes out, <laughs> and they just have me singing, like, embraced by the darkness, I'm loose in the light. <laughs> like I'm just losing my shit to Fozzie, and uh, it's a fun time. So kudos to Jericho for making an all-timer here with, with, uh, with Judas. 
Number 12. We are at, this is the first Jim Johnston original. Jim Johnston was, of course, the uh, head of music creation, the director of music. I, I forget his official title, but he basically created virtually all of the entrance themes in the 90s and early 2000s for WWF and WWE. And the man is a legend. I think he's a he should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as, as far as I'm concerned with the the amount of music, the, the variety of his catalog and, and what a great musician he is. And th there's so many tracks that, that we could have picked, like Stone Cold's theme, uh, plenty. But for me, one that still gets me super hyped up is the entrance of the Ultimate Warrior. Uh, and uh, just the Ultimate Warriors theme. Dun, 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 It's thrash. It's power metal. It's glam metal. It's awesome. The, the Ultimate Warrior looked like the most coolest metal, glam metal guy. I don't know. I loved the Ultimate Warrior as a kid. Not so much as an adult hearing his opinions on politics. But I didn't know any of that when I was eight years old. <laughs> I was just watching uh, cool dudes beat each other up, and Ultimate Warrior was one of the coolest easily, especially with the entrance theme and the opening presentation. Like, really, if he didn't have that, what what does the Ultimate Warrior have? It's not like he had great matches. His matches were all of three minutes long, maybe. You know, it, it was just the entrance theme is what made him. The entrance theme is what got everyone excited. Number 11, speaking of getting people excited, The Undertaker, huge history. Of of metalness, you know all three all of his theme songs. You've got the the original gong and the gothy funeral procession music, uh, and then also I think the more notable one was when he was biker taker uh, or American badass taker when he came out to Limp Bizkit's Rollin', and then eventually uh, the license for that ran out, and so he started coming out to American Badass, which was. A uh, Kid Rock take on the uh, a Kid Rock song where he sampled Sad But True and then rapped over it. Uh, and so, I mean, hey, hearing the Sad But True riff in a WWE entrance every week for five years, pretty fucking cool. And, and that, that whole presentation with the bike and the song and everything, awesome. Especially WrestleMania 19, Limp Bizkit's out there performing, rolling as Undertaker bikes all across Safeco Field. It looks so cool. That, that's, that is the memory I have in my head of uh, the Undertaker during his American Badass era. It was that moment right there. We're up to the top 10. Uh, hopefully you're still with me here. Hopefully you haven't closed the window just because you thought, Man, he's ranking my favorite wrestling theme too low. Or, or where is this theme that I that I wanted to hear? Well, we got ten more entries. Hopefully, it's coming up. Starting up hot with the top ten, we got Batista with "I Walk Alone" by Saliva. I almost forgot about this. Honestly, like I had my list compiled, then I had to push the brood out because I had to include Batista. This riff. <laughs> uh, it's just amazing. Saliva, fantastic, did a great performance. And this is another song I believe that Jim Johnson wrote. Saliva just performed it, maybe added their own twist to it. But this is an iconic entrance theme. It's forever linked to Batista. If he ever comes back again, this is the only theme he's going to use. If they ever try to change it, it would be a huge mistake. And in general, you know, like, I feel like this theme almost sounds a bit like the the Kane theme, which I feel like that's that would be another honorable mention. Didn't make the, the top 20 list, but Kane had a pretty metal entrance and an entrance theme. But I prefer I Walk Alone. This song is such a banger. You could listen to it, like, just in your rotation. It doesn't need to just be a metal entrance theme. It's just a fun metal song so props to saliva props to jim johnson props to batista for that one number nine we have late wcw era sting you might recall after the wcw movie ready to rumble starring david arquette that had a very metal soundtrack and the highlight of that soundtrack was a live performance from woodstock 99 of seek and destroy by metallica 
which WCW licensed at the time and used as Sting's official entrance song. Because, of course, the actual song was much more expensive. So the live version, cheap, easy peasy. But this was, uh, I'm almost ashamed to say, my first foray into deep cut Metallica. Like, I just knew the hits they would play on the radio. I never, uh, I didn't dive in and listen to the entire discography before this. But as soon as I heard Seek and Destroy, I was like, I love this riff. I love this long intro. And Sting with the Crow gimmick was metal as fuck. So... I was like, man, I really need to check out Old Metallica. And I believe because of Seek and Destroy, that's what got me to uh, go check out the the early Metallica stuff. Like, right, the Lightning and and and, and even uh, Kill 'Em All. Kill 'Em All. I remember when I listened to first, I was like, this is the fastest thing I've ever heard, <laughs> and it's all because of Sting, all because of WCW. Number eight, another ECW entry, Tommy Dreamer. Coming out to Allison Chain's Man in the Box, the innovator of violence, with one of the most underrated metal bands of all time. I just have nothing but great things to say about Allison Chain's Lane Staley, icon in and of himself. The whole band is so awesome. And I I love I love everything about him. And this was the perfect entrance theme. You know, within two seconds, you know exactly what the song is. You know, right away, you know who it is. You know who's coming out. Tommy Dreamer was their top baby face in ECW. You heard this every episode, and it was just so great. It set such a vibe. It set such an MTV vibe for ECW, which I feel like the other two big promotions of the time, WWF and WCW, weren't quite doing just yet. They saw what ECW was doing, and, and then they had to get in on the tr- on the gravy train, so to speak, right? And one way that they did that, uh, one way WCW did that, I think, they were kind of first to it with the NWO entrance themes. I talked to Eric Bischoff uh, quite a, very early on in the Life of Squared Circle Pit. It's an awesome interview. Definitely check it out. But he mentioned to me, we talked about the NWO themes because obviously the theme songs, if you know anything about classic hard rock and heavy metal, you know that they are re- remixes or or. Interpol- interpolations, let's say, of classic Jimi Hendrix stuff like Voodoo Child. And and some of these riffs are just iconic Hendrix, like the Dan and that's a Hendrix riff. That's literally a Hendrix. And and uh, I talked to Eric Bischoff and I asked him, I was like, oh, how did you, how are you able to do this? How are you able to get away with this? I mean, this is Jimi Hendrix. This is a huge artist. He said that before the interview uh, started, he spoke to the estate of Jimi Hendrix and they somehow gave him this unbelievable sweetheart licensing deal where he could license those riffs and all of that stuff for something like a hundred grand, which was nothing, which is, you know, what Hulk Hogan, Hulk Hogan makes more than that in one appearance in WCW. So for them, a hundred grand would be like what 20 bucks is for us, <laughs> for us common folk. And, and the NWO themes are iconic. They still kill it like they still sound fresh to this day Jimi hendrix is of course timeless so anytime you rip it off Jimi hendrix it's gonna be great <laughs> and so uh that, that's why the nwo themes i feel are number seven number six another wwf original by rick derringer now of course rick derringer the guy knows how to rock he did the hulk hogan theme i'm a real american which could also get an honorable mention here it's pretty hard rocking pretty heavy metal dun, dun. But that's not the one I'm picking. Uh uh. Number six, Rick Derringer, Demolition. Here comes the axe. You you remember the song. I don't have to sing it. (laughs) Demolition were so cool to me. I was a WWF kid growing up. I didn't get WCW until much later. So I never saw the Road Warriors until the Legion of Doom came to WWF. I didn't know that Demolition were just a total ripoff of Legion of Doom. I thought Demolition just looked cool. I didn't, I hadn't even seen Mad Max yet, realizing that both teams are a ripoff of the Mad Max movies. But that intro from Rick Derringer with that the walking rip, like it sounded like elephants marching, was just so good. And I feel like, that song, if it was released today as a metal song, it would it would blow up. It'd be number one on Liquid Metal. It'd be everywhere. It's such a great track, and, and it still holds up. I actually listened to it right before playing this uh, or or recording this podcast rather, and 
it's been stuck in my head this whole time I've been talking. So demolition, Rick Derringer, maybe that's another one that could have been a little higher. But no, because I'm looking at the top five now, and there's no way I would change this top five. Do you think you know? Do you think you know me? No, we already mentioned Edge. So no, it's not Edge. Coming in at number five, CM Punk. You know, CM Punk has had many a metal theme. He's had Kill Switch Engage uh, as an entrance theme. This fire burns. But I love personally his, he, like when I think of CM Punk coming into the ring, I think of Cult of Personality by Living Color. Uh, one of the greatest metal songs of all time by one of the most underrated metal bands. Them and Alice in Chains could do an underrated metal tour and I would go to it in a heartbeat because both of those bands rule so much. But I love Cult of Personality. I love Living Color in general and it's just so cool to me that even in 2023, Living Color was getting airplay on TNT and TBS and you know, CM Punk was introducing this band to an entirely new audience. And I remember a few years ago, they played Riot Fest in Chicago and CM Punk came out and introduced them. And it was just so cool. Everything about it is great. I love how much attention CM Punk has brought to Living Color, who are truly one of the most underrated, best metal bands of all time. So, and what a great entrance. Just thinking about that money in the bank in Chicago all those years ago with him. And, uh, well, that's actually, that was right before he came out to Cult of Personality. That was the last time he came out to Kill Switch Engage. Uh, but ever since then, it's just been so cool. Like at Survivor Series when he won the world title again, where he got the Fink to come out and introduce him. Cult of Personality Blast, like it's just so cool. It's forever linked to CM Punk, and, and I'm so glad he picked it. Number four, one of my all-time favorites, is Rob Van Dam. Coming out to Pantera's Walk. What a brilliant combination by Paul Heyman. Uh, Walk is one of the biggest metal tracks of the 90s. One of the most recognizable metal songs of the 90s. And Rob Van Dam was ECW's top guy. Uh, he was the one that would close out the shows even though he was the world champion. He would still, he was the TV champion and the TV title match would be in the main event because it would be the best match on the show. And... The crowd loved Rob Van Dam. He was super over, and the crowd loved singing Walk by Pantera when Rob Van Dam came out. Of course, when he went to WWE, WWE did not want to license Walk, uh, so they gave him a Walk sound-alike called One of a Kind, which was a, a good, a fun theme song too. But let me tell you, when he made his AEW debut earlier this year and came out to Pantera, I didn't even know I wanted that. But I was so excited to see it and so excited to be reminded of how awesome Rob Van Dam's entrance is with the whole crowd just chanting, respect, walk, what do you say? I loved it. The, the, my one complaint is they actually played the full song. If you ever watch those ECW shows, they just loop the chorus over and over and over again. You never get to any of the verses. Just respect, verse, uh, respect walk. And, uh, and it worked. It worked. The crowd would always go crazy. That is not the last ECW appearance on the list. I will tell you that much. Number three, and the top three was very hard for me to arrange. Any of these songs could be number one, any of these entrances. Uh, and number three, we have Triple H, of course, the game. Motorhead. Now, he's got Motorhead to do three entrance themes for him. Uh, he, the, the game, the King of Kings, and then of course the evolution theme, all three songs complete bangers. The game of course is the most, uh, recognizable one. So, uh, that's the one I included on the list. And, uh, and it was so cool. I feel like he brought so much attention to motorhead. Like so many wrestling fans probably learned of motorhead because of their affiliation with triple H. And he even got them to come and perform at WrestleMania a few times. Always very exciting. Always so cool to see Lemmy in a wrestling environment. And they loved it. And Triple H ended up being a very close friend to Lemmy and even spoke at his funeral, which was so surreal to see Triple H speaking while all these metal gods like Ozzy, Zach Wilde, all these people are in the front row just listening to Triple H talk at Lemmy's funeral. It's, it's a surreal sight. But it just showed how much Triple H and WWE meant to Motorhead as a whole that they wanted to include them as a show of respect. So all timer right there, top three, the game, Motorhead. What could the top two be now, you might be asking? If, if you thought the game was like, where else can I go from here? Well, I saved the best two for last. And again, it was very difficult to arrange which goes where. But here's the list. Here's the order I came up with. 
Number two is the Road Warriors in WCW and NWA coming out to Black Sabbath Iron Man. This is before the the, the world of copyright issues and lawsuits and, and performance licensing. How insane, like the Road Warriors have this insane look and they look like the toughest dudes in the world. And Black Sabbath were in the early 80s, the scariest metal band or the scariest band in the world. What a great combination. Could you imagine hearing those riff, hearing that Iron Man riff? I, 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 you, know, you know the riff. I don't have to, I don't have to pantomime it for you. You know the riff. And out come the Road Warriors with those shoulder pads, the spikes, the, the face paint. I mean, it's the it's the perfect combination. It's It, it kind of goes back to, of course, that's why I had to rank Demolition lower because Demolition essentially did the same package just with their own song, you know, without any copyright issues. But Road Warriors were the ones that created that intro. They created that aura, that vibe. And you got to look up, you got to look up these entrances that they had in Japan to Iron Man. They're, they're just walking through the crowd and in Japan, they didn't have, the barricade separating the crowd from uh, the wrestlers coming out. So it looks like the road warriors with their shoulder pads on are just kind of fighting their way through a mosh pit as Iron Maiden goes on. And it's just, it's so cool. It's the coolest thing ever. I, I admittedly have not gotten, did not get into road warriors until I was older, uh, until I was able to access archives and like really get into the tapes and all that. And it's just the most metal thing ever easily. All right, now that leaves only one one more. There's only one one song left on my top 20 most metal songs. What could it be? Did you figure it out? I think you did. It's Metallica, Enter Sandman, and The Sandman from ECW. And I feel like any positive thing I've said about any other song could be applied to this. Like I said with Fozzie, it's a great sing-along. This is the best sing-along. When I think of... Sandman entering to Metallica's Enter Sandman. The, maybe the greatest entrance of all time in the history of pro wrestling is from ECW One Night Stand, the first one, where they're at Hammerstein Ballroom, Enter Sandman plays, and the crowd knows every single word because, of course, in New York City, that song was played to death on K-Rock. And it's such a powerful moment. It's such a... I have goosebumps just talking about it of the whole crowd singing along as Sandman walks across the entire Hammerstein. He's drinking the beer. He's pouring beer in fans mouths. He's busted open before the match starts. It was just the most metal moment. It was so great. And it made me so excited to not only be a Metallica fan, but be a pro wrestling fan. So that's why that is number one on my list what do you think? Was this a good list? I, I mean, obviously, I think it's a good list. I'm the one, I'm the one who made it. But what do you think? Let me let me do a recap of the entire top twenty. Let me know in the comments if you would have changed anything. Number twenty, Bray Wyatt, let me in. Number nineteen, Jushin Thunder Liger. Number eighteen, Finn Balor, Demon King. Number seventeen, Taz, War Machine by Kiss. Number sixteen, Brian Danielson, Final Countdown. Number fifteen, Edge. With Metalingus. Number 14, House of Black. Number 13, Jericho with Fozzie. Number 12, The Ultimate Warrior. Number 11, The Undertaker with the American Badass and Roland themes. Number 10, Batista, I Walk Alone by Saliva. Number 9, Seek and Destroy with Sting. Number 8, Tommy Dreamer coming out to Man in the Box by Alice in Chains. And number 7, The NWO themes. Number six, Demolition, Rick Derringer. Number five, CM Punk, Cult of Personality. Number four, a Rob Van Dam with Walk. Number three, Motorhead with The Game for Triple H. Number two, Road Warriors coming out to Iron Man. And number one, of course, Sandman coming out to Enter Sandman by Metallica. This is a fun episode and a fun list to make. And like I said, if you thought I left anything out, leave me a comment. At Rob Pasbani. I'll be back to my regularly formatted interviews next week. So I hope you can join me right here in the pit.